Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this webinar focusing on presenting at caucus. Whether you're new to presenting or experienced, uh, this session will have important information to enhance the overall experience for you, but also your audience at caucus 2017. We just want to remind you that this webinar will be recorded, and this will be shared um, with everyone who's registered for the webinar um, after the session by the end of the day today. We are hoping that there will be time for questions and answers at the end of this webinar, but if there are any lingering questions that we don't get to, you can contact conference at caucus.ca and you can be redirected. We really encourage you to also engage with us. Whether you use Twitter or social media, we'll be using the hashtag caucus17, uh, C-A-C-U-S-S-1-7. -S and we also encourage you to get involved, whether it's outside of this, um, this webinar today, um, engage with the conference website, and we hope that this will be fruitful. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Brandon Smith. I manage the Residence Life and Education program here at Ryerson University, and Janet and I are lucky to have many people on the line with us today um, as our special guests. We have Amanda Bettencourt from Carleton University talking to us about accessibility. Kathleen Courtney, unfortunately, cannot be with us today as she's ill, um, but she sends her regrets. Pete Dickens is here, and he will be talking about the presentation management system. We have Allison Jardin from Caucus, and also Jessica Pilfold from Guelph Humber, and she's also representative of the program committee. And here I'd like to pass this along to Janet. Oh, thanks, Brandon. I'm excited to be here. I am calling in from Calgary, Alberta. I work at Mount Royal University where I am a, a student counselor and a longtime fan of caucus. So what a pleasure to be online with everyone. If you're having any trouble hearing us, please let us know. And of course, you can also chat in the box, post questions, and we'll do our best to get them um, through the webinar. And then of course, as Brandon said, towards the end, we'll save some time for conversation. We have a jammed packed outline today. This is our plan. We are going to go through a little bit of an overview about the value of presenting at caucus and really that's more to share our appreciation with each of you who have already been uh, accepted to present this year. It was a very difficult competition and we know that the quality of our presentations is excellent. So we're here to support you to learn our new presentation management system and really to encourage you to think about elements of a successful presentation. Engagement and content uh, will be part of our focus today. We'll also be leaving you with resources that are available to help. And then uh, towards the end of this, uh, of this conversation, we'll have an opportunity for questions, to engage in some support, and to introduce you to the people on the line who are also here as follow-up. Like any good presentation, we've tried to outline our goals. These are our learning goals for this next hour of your lives. Uh, by the end of this webinar, you will know what resources are available for you, both online and offline. By the end of this presentation, you'll have an introduction to this management system. This is brand new for Caucus, and this is to really help us engage in our community, help to manage all the logistics that we face when we're having presenters come into such a massive um, event. Uh, it's really helping us to streamline our support and our technology. By the end of this webinar, we really want you to be able to consider strategies for creative engagement and elements that will be part of a successful presentation. Most of all, though, Brandon, I think you and I really just want to encourage everyone. We want, at the end of this webinar, for you to feel encouraged that this will be a fantastic caucus experience as a presenter and that you'll have lots of supports available to you. That is our plan. Okay, so to get us started, we first of all want to know a little bit about our audience. So this is a poll. We would like you to indicate whether you have presented at caucus before. So you can say yes or no by just clicking on your screen here. We are curious wow. to know whether you have ever presented at caucus before. Oh my gosh, Brandon, people are quick. Okay, we've got almost, almost 50, everyone's 50. in. Uh, Okay, so we have, it is almost 50-50. Has everyone gotten a chance to submit there? All right, so let's go on to our results then. So here you can see our poll is almost half and half. Half of us presented before about 48.4% and just over 50% of us have never presented. So that's fantastic. First of all, thank you. Oh my goodness, thank you so much for being part of this experience. Um, I find presenting at caucus is one of the it's one of the best venues as a professional because you're talking to other people who 
already share your passion for students and student services. We are generally nice, good, loving people who are doing this work because we care about it. Um, I find it's a very lovely opportunity to share not just research and experience, but different ways of presenting and engaging our audience. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty friendly environment. Would you agree with that, Brandon? I would agree. I really have appreciated over the years the engagement that uh, and the value you get from presenting at a conference. I find that whether it's presenting on a program or an idea, there's always an opportunity to contribute to the idea that's being presented and help the presenter make that better for the future, um, but to also take back new ideas to your own institution. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. How many times have you presented at caucus, Brandon? Uh, I've presented, I think, four or five times now. Fantastic. And size of audience, variety of audience? It's always been very different. I think that um, one lesson I've learned for new presenters is that you might be expecting a specific audience in your session, perhaps that's someone that works in the same type of unit or area within the division. But it's mm -hmm. always great to have different perspectives, and I think that always adds to the overall conference experience, but also the topic that you're presenting on. I agree. I also find that it's, um, when you go into a conference and you're presenting, other people then get a chance to know who you are, like what you are passionate about, what you're working on, what field you're working in. They get a quick sense of your, or really an engaged sense of your personality, um, your way of thinking about student services. Mm -hmm. So you're going to find that as a presenter, you'll be a bit of a magnet. People will come to you. They will talk to you. They'll seek you out after your presentation. They're going to want to know more about your world in student services. So. The value of presenting at caucus is quite rich. It's not just the, the seminar or the quick talk you're doing, the lightning talk or the 45-minute session. Oh, my goodness, it is, it's really going to change your caucus experience. So for those of you who are new to this, uh, get ready for that because you're going to be on people's radars. They're going to want to follow up with you. It's a fantastic way to engage in a community. And there's also the opportunity to meet like-minded individuals, someone you haven't met before that could foster a new collaboration. An example is Janet and I were presenting at a different conference a few years ago on a research project we'd been working on, and we actually met the person that has collaborated with us on the statistics mm -hmm. aspect of our research project at the conference. So I think that's also something to, be, to remember and be mindful of. Oh my gosh, it's so true. Okay, the theme this year. So our theme this year is our past and our future. Uh, we know this is Canada's 150th. We know that we are in the process of indigenization and understanding uh, reconciliation across Canada. Carleton University has really put together a fantastic conference theme that is considering where we've been and where we're going. Brandon, do you want to say something about how we can incorporate this into our presentations or do we have to? I think it's a really good question and a really good point. I think that for folks who've been at conferences before, you may have um, seen in conference programs or booklets um, the actual conference theme um, peppered in every single session. In some sessions, you might have left thinking, you know, that actually wasn't addressed at all. So a tip um, and something to think about is if you are going to be incorporating the theme into your presentation, you might want to do that with intentionality to consult your resources on the uh, conference website to learn a little bit more about Carleton's vision and, and viewpoint from our past and our future. So that can be done in a way that's meaningful, but also not to feel pressured to incorporate that as well. Awesome. Okay, let's turn it over to Jessica. Jessica's here from the Programming Committee. I love Jessica. We worked together on the Evaluations Committee last year. She's just a gem of a human being. We're so lucky that she's working with Caucus now. Jessica, can you unmute yourself and come on the line to talk about the types of presentations we're looking at for this 2017 Caucus? Absolutely. Thank you for that lovely introduction, Janice. And you're welcome. Um, <laughs> it's been a joy to work with you as well. Um, so I'm here to speak a little bit about the different types of presentations that we have at this year's caucus conference. Um, so this look, might look familiar for those of you that have attended before, um, but there are some unique changes and, and unique opportunities to engage uh, the participants this year. So we have our two um, standard presentation styles. So we have a 45-minute breakout session, which is a standard presentation with some amount of audience engagement, maybe some polling, um, some discussions within the room. Um, we also have a 75-minute interactive session, so you have a little bit more time to do perhaps a more uh, of a workshop-style presentation with some further engagement and an opportunity for deeper discussions. Um, so Brandon made a really good point about including the theme within um, all of your presentations. 
this gives you the opportunity to really delve into how, your, how the theme is connected to your topic and your material, um, and a unique opportunity for those attending your um, presentation to really engage from their perspective in their functional area as well. Um, we have a poster session. Um, we've got um, a lot of um, poster sessions or, or those that are successful in um, getting their posters submitted um, up for offering this year. So um, we're wanting to um, emphasize the content and the unique opportunity you have in presenting your material on a poster. Do you have additional engagement with uh, a multitude of participants as they go through the poster session throughout the day? Um, you have an opportunity to um, have a deeper dialogue with those that stop and chat with you about your poster. Um, lots of questions can be asked on both ends from those that are presenting on their poster as well as those they're engaging with to build on the ideas presented and potentially receive some really helpful and valuable feedback in real time. Um, so you don't need to wait for any feedback forms for um, any of the sessions. You get that um, face to face interaction um, as a poster presenter. Finally, uh, we have the Big Ideas session, which is really unique this year because it's powered by Picha Kucha, which is a mouthful in itself and difficult to say. So I've been practicing <laughs> before um, my, big, my big star turn today. Um, so Picha Kucha is a sort of a PowerPoint presentation style. Um, it's 20 slides that auto advance every 20 seconds. So it's um, a dynamic presentation medium that allows participants to engage with the conference theme in a fairly innovative way um, to hear from a variety of voices within the allotted time. So instead of one group um, speaking for the entire duration of the Big Ideas session, it actually has several different um, participants and different presenters um, speaking in about eight and a half minutes about their um, particular topic or material. Um, so it keeps you on time um, and a really unique opportunity to present your material. The attendance piece um, is similar to what you would expect of a typical 45 or 75 minute session. Um, I've attended the Big Ideas session the last two caucus conference sessions, or sorry, conferences, um, and really enjoyed the um, ability to um, enter and exit at kind of your leisure and see the, the presentations and the short um, Big Ideas sessions that um, most speak to you or most um, interest you. People join and leave more freely to view the presentations um, that are most important to them. And as for resources, because this is a new presentation style, um, I encourage anyone that might be um, submitting or sorry, might be presenting their big ideas powered by Picha Kucha to check out pichacucha.org. So I'll spell that out. Um, it's P E C H A K U C H A dot org. It has many examples and some sample presentations of this um, concise presentation format that drives home the um, visual interest um, level that's presented in this one versus maybe a typical PowerPoint presentation. Um, and it, can, it can help spark some ideas for big ideas presenters of, of how to present their material. So a really unique opportunity um, to present whatever you're, you're speaking towards at our conference this year. Thank you so much, Jess. It's great to see that our program committee has found um, really different engaging ways to engage um, the, the caucus population. And I think that regardless of learner and learning style, there's something here that could really target all of our needs. So thanks so much for that great overview. Thank you. I'd like to now turn it over to our incredible and supportive conference manager, Allison, and she's going to um, also invite Pete to join the line and give us an overview of our new management system. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Allison. I'm the conference manager for Caucus. Uh, this year, we're very excited to introduce a new system for displaying digital presentations. Our goal this year with the new system is to assist presenters and attendees alike and to enhance the overall conference experience. So if you plan to share any digital materials this year, including slides, images, video, on a screen in your presentation, please listen carefully to the following information. I also want to make the note that this is only applicable for 45-minute and 75-minute sessions. Big Ideas presenters are going to follow a different procedure, and you will receive those instructions from me later this week. 
So now I would like to introduce Pete from Freeman Audiovisual to explain standard presentation management. Hello everyone and thank you for the intro. As mentioned, my name is Pete Dickens. I'm with Freeman Audiovisual and I'll be uh, the point person to the association and probably to presenters um, for the advanced submission and even during the conference. Uh, there is going to be a general support, um, but it's probably going to be me behind the support. Um, anyways, I'm going to move on to the first slide. I'm going to go through a few slides to give a quick overview of what to expect. Um, and afterwards, uh, we'll see if we could take in a few questions before I drop off the line. The system we have in advance, what will happen is there will be an, an email from the association um, with general information advising the site's open, here's a link to go to the site, um, here's the speaker item hours, some very non-technical, just general, here's how to access the service. Um, once you click, the, click that link, you would come to a website. Um, that will ask you for your email address and password. Uh, we'll have a pre-assigned password to everyone's account. Uh, upon logging in or entering that initial password, you'll be asked to create your own custom password. For future visits, you'll just log in with your email address and that custom password. Before you log in, there's a link. Uh, it doesn't really show as a link, but there's a guidelines uh, tab along the top of the screen that's accessible whether or not you're logged in. On the guidelines, that's where there's lots of technical information as in um, requirements to use the online system, the file formats accepted, all the nuances of uh, PowerPoint which is the ideal format to deliver the presentations on the system. Uh, but it's all in there as well as a support email it will be listed that everyone could contact and that is a um, platooned email so we're trying to get responses should be back within the next business day. Upon logging in, uh, every presenter we have your information in advance as in when and where you're presenting. That is the, one of the big features of this system. Uh, as long as you give us the file, it will be in your room at the time it needs to be. Um, it's still best to review the information on screen to ensure that the room and the time is correct. There's always updates or changes. Uh, sometimes, to be honest, we're having changes. It could be a room's overflowed, so if something moves, um, we'll update our system as well as there'll be a program announcement. Um, but always be sure it is to review the information to make sure that lines up to what you're expecting. Um, front and center, there is a green, well, I guess front and right. <laughs> there is an upload file button. By clicking that, um, this will open up your, brow your file browser on your computer where you could upload. Um, there is no limitation on the amount of files or the size, um, which is a big thing with all the uh, multimedia presentations these days. Um, uh, once you've uploaded your files, you'll have a display along the bottom. It will be a hyperlink to each of the files. So you could download them at your convenience from any other station. Um, it will also list the upload date. Um, there's a little trash bin on the side as you could delete. Um, there is a startup file column. If you give us multiple files, uh, you could place a check mark next to the box that you want as your primary uh, presentation file. Um, this could be if you have a long and short version, you're going to do the short version. If time permits, you'll launch the, the long version. Set the short version as your startup file. So in the room, by, when you click Start, which I'll show later, that's the file that will launch. Um, there's also a status field. Uh, the association is going to be reviewing presentations after they're uploaded. Uh, this is just a, a informational piece. If it's still pending or regardless of status, it will not technically block you from presenting. <laughs> but um, if that status will update as the association goes through this. Uh, when they update your status, you'll see an email from our system just advising if the file has been changed to approved, uh, de declined, or the status has been changed back to pending for some reason. If you add a new version of the file and update, that status will trip back to pending until the association is able to review the file. And moving on, so that's an advanced that could be done during uh, any time before the event. Um, there is a deadline that the association is asking everyone to have their files uploaded by. And Allison, I don't know if you want to just briefly jump in to mention what that deadline is. Uh, the deadline is Friday, May 26th to submit your presentation. Um, that allows our accessibility team a few days to go through all the sessions this year and ensure they meet minimum accessibility uh, requests and uh, guidelines that Amanda will get into in a few minutes. 
Thank you. Um, and now on site, uh, it's the what we actually end up doing is we uh, bring a server on site, we transfer all the files and redirect the website to our on site mobile server at the venue. Um, that will be a day, or so, a day or two before the conference once we work up the logistics. It will be a seamless transition to all presenters. Uh, you'll be going to the same website. It's just instead of going to a server elsewhere, it will be going to our server on site. Um, then when you come on site, what we're asking is even if you've submitted in advance, we very much would like presenters to come to the speaker ready room to review their presentations. The computers in that speaker ready room are the identical build and software setup as those in the session rooms. That's the only way that we can ensure that your fonts, animations, media, all play back as you expected. Uh, we have technicians that could look through it, but it's all in the eye of the beholder um, to ensure that your fonts, animations, and everything is exactly as you wanted. Um, it will be the same email address and password. If it's your first time on the system, which shouldn't be, um, but if it is there, we can log you in as a first time. Um, then once you're logged in, the interface is almost identical to the website. We wanted it to be uh, a near seamless transition to presenters. Uh, the only difference would be if you click on a hyperlink of your file, it will actually uh, open it in line locally so you could review in PowerPoint and it will ask you to put it into slideshow mode. There's an additional feature that we also have that isn't captured in the screenshot, um, but it would be uh, preview files in room. By clicking that, it actually mimics the session room interface and how you'd launch your file. So you could almost rehearse verbatim what you'll be doing in the session room. Um, and now again, we're, there is that deadline to send all files. If there is a late last minute change, that can be facilitated. But again, that will change your status from approved back to pending. Um, and the association will know. <laughs> um, so again, please respect the deadline as much as possible. In the session room, uh, this is the interface you'll see in the room. There won't be any need to navigate to the file somewhere on the system. Uh, what we do is you'll have uh, all the presenters listed in the session will be listed on screen. Uh, you'd click your name from the list of presenters below, which would bring you up to focus along the top. And then you have two options. If you click Start and you've only uploaded one file, it will auto-launch that file. If you've uploaded multiple presentation files and select the startup file, it will launch that file. However, if you've uploaded multiple files and have not selected what you want as your startup file, a submenu will pop up listing the files you uploaded and asking you which one you'd like to launch. That is the same effect you get if you click My Files. Uh, along the bottom, and that's actually how it should be in the session room. The intention is you walk up the podium, click your name, click Start, your presentation will be on screen. And ideally, our, the target format for our system is PowerPoint. Um, we'll be using PowerPoint 2013. Uh, on the event, and Windows 7 of the operating system. We do not install additional fonts or animation or fonts or codecs. Um, it will be on the guidelines listing what we support, but in general it will be the uh, Office 2013 uh, font library. Uh, along the bottom, there are uh, there's a wheel of uh, items you could use. The biggest one to mention would be the request assistance on the bottom right. That is, if you get to the room and you notice there's an issue or you get beforehand and the audio is too low, uh, click the request assistance, or request assistance. You will be given a prompt ask if it's catering, computer, or banquets. Um, select which it is, and that will send an alert back to our speaker room staff to know that your room needs assistance. And then we'll radio for the closest available technician to come to the room. So there should be no need to either have people running files to the session room or have um, someone running out of the session room to try and uh, load a file remotely. I believe that covers the, in a nutshell the whole system. There's tons of other little options and nuances to go over, but I, we don't have that time to do so. But we'd be happy to follow up afterwards if there's any questions. Um, they could be, I could take a few right now. Um, otherwise, the association will collect them at the end of the conference and we'll follow up. And as Allison mentioned, we, this is just the intro. Um, we will be doing uh, follow-up uh, media to show extra details and as well as fielding questions. 
No, it's great, Pete. Oh, my goodness, this is a new uh, system for all of us, and thank you for being our point person. I imagine you're going to get tons of questions. Okay, so over in the chat box, I can see a few of them. So first of all, can changes still be made after something's been submitted? So what we heard you say is that, of course, you can still make changes, but it'll change your status back to pending, and we need to have enough time for a caucus to review it again. Really what our main point here is looking at accessibility minimum standards, which Amanda will talk about sooner, um, but that's true. You can reload it again if needed. Yeah, it's, it will be, um, if it's on site, it's rather instant. I don't want to by any means <laughs> set a precedent on that, but the, uh, the system is extremely quick. It could normally, if there is an emergency last minute change that was unforeseen, it is by network and it will um, likely be to the session room before you get there. Um, I just saw a Prezi question come up too. Um, for Prezi, um, we have two different ways of going about it. Um, we'll definitely want to test it in the session room. Ideally, uh, the answer you're not going to like is to export it to a PDF. Um, we have the one mentioned for anyone using Prezi, please, please be subtle on the zooming in and out. Um, for, as Freeman, we've actually had numerous complaints of excessive uh, zooming in and out in the front audience, depending on the, how close they are, the angle at the screen. It just depends on the room. The zooming in and out can cause nausea, and um, we've had uh, we've had people walk out of the front rows just because there was too much theme on Prezi features than it was on their content. Um, that okay. said, a standalone Prezi is if they want to use it on the system a standalone. You need a pro account for that, um, but a standalone Prezi can be loaded in the session room. Okay. Um, there'll be a there is a my computer button at the bottom, so if it's on their flash drive, they could insert it at the computer at the podium, browse to it, and run it autonomously off their flash drive. And we'd rehearse that in the speaker right room to ensure they've gone over that process. Okay, so what I'm hearing is that um, if we do want to use Prezi, it's kind of an exception. Um, be really mindful about the motion pieces and to follow up with you way ahead of time first, Pete, to make sure we've got things smooth. Um, but it sounds like there is a way to accommodate that if needed. Yeah, and that's again, the earlier that the presenter could come to the speaker ready room um, to review it, that is the best thing we could do is just to go over the process to show them this is how you launch in the room. Essentially, flash drive, it just has to be a portable Prezi. Um, we do have instructions of that on the guidelines. We will list how to link on the Prezi site how to export to PDF, which is the preferred uh, alternative. Um, but if that cannot be captured, if there's media, as in a video, that would have to be converted to a portable Prezi to capture, um, to capture the media. Otherwise, the PDF will capture all the static information, just no animations. Okay. Uh, there was another question about clickers. Many of us use a remote clicker. Will there be one in the room? Uh, that is a... Oh, yeah, go ahead. The, clickers, the clickers are ordered for all rooms. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, what I'm seeing from just a follow-up about the Prezi, Albert's asking if you have to upload the file ahead of time. And it sounds like no, because you're doing a portable Prezi. But please follow up with Pete directly about that. There was another question about engagement tools like polls. So in this webinar, we've embedded a poll. Some of us will use other kinds of polling systems like Poll Ev or um, Kahoot. What if we're doing something like that, Pete? How do we embed those polls in our study, in our presentation? So that's a great question on that one. Now, what will happen is when we, it depends if there is a plugin that's installed to PowerPoint. If there is a PowerPoint plugin that gets installed, that is something that will have to be discussed offline. Um, the reason being is what we need to do is put a standard across the set speaker room computers in all session rooms. There cannot be exceptions of some softwares in one room, softwares on the other, and then in the speaker room as there, we couldn't parallel that experience. What might work for one presenter in one room then wouldn't work if they had a second talk in another room. Um, that said, I saw someone said, Pull Everywhere and Conferences.io are the two polling services we have used. Um, in line, but then you would need, uh, obviously we do have internet access. You are at the um, limitation of waiting for it to load. Um, there is an ability by clicking, there's an Inner Explorer button along the bottom also. That's on that little arch or arc along the bottom. Um, there is the IE button. That will launch Inner Explorer. So there is also the ability to, and no, again, it's not in line, but that's what we've had quite a few conferences do is they just went, um, they'd actually go open up uh, through Inner Explorer, 
go into the Pull Everywhere or the Conferences I.O. page and run the pull through and explore. Exactly. Uh, yeah. and that, that's the only way we could uh, just blanketly say, if you need it, you could use it that way. Otherwise, that is an offline discussion, and we could probably only support if we did install. We'd only be able to install one specific one if it's Pull Everywhere or Conference I.O. And it does slow the load time, which is the thing I'd have to mention is because it has to load that plugin. So when they click the presenters, click, click Start, instead of getting the slide to screen within a second, it takes a few extra seconds. Um, I know it doesn't sound like much, but if as a presenter when you're up on screen, you click Start on a system you haven't used before, and a couple seconds could seem like minutes. Um, so that's why we try and keep things as light as possible and ideally would not install it unless it's required for specific sessions and organized in advance. Um, that would be my answer right now. Would be we sh as, is it, as it is right now, it was not spec, but we can add that to specific rooms, but we'd really want uh, advance notice. Otherwise, the presenters would ha on demand would have to be using uh, the Internet Explorer and browsing over the website. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Pete. I mean, we're going to have tons of questions as we get into yeah, this. Sorry. And again, it's, it's brand new for us, right? So this, this will be a good learning experience. What yep. I do know about my caucus colleagues is that we are all interested in new technology. We're all interested in engagement. Um, these kinds of audience polling systems are, are fun, and they're a great way to bring your audience right into your presentation. So I totally see that we're going to want to do things like Poll Everywhere or Kahoot, um, et cetera. So be ready for website ask, uh, questions about uh, learning websites and other kinds of um, explore or um, options. And we'll follow up with you. Hopefully towards the end of today, we'll have a, another chance for more questions. Um, that is a mention that I do have to drop off for a, another client call. Um, so that any of the questions I could record, I could review the recording afterwards, or um, uh, look at it afterwards, and then follow up. Um, that's what I'd, I unfortunately don't have a choice on that one. Yeah, oh my gosh, no Pete, worries. I totally understand. Uh, if people want to contact you, how do they get a hold of you, Pete? You know um, what? They can. Sorry, it's Allison. People can just email me, events at caucus.ca, and I'll relay everything through Pete. That's awesome. So if everyone heard that, it's events at caucus.ca. Allison, if you could put that in our chat box, that's fantastic. Sure. And Pete, thank you so much for being with us, not just today, but through this whole conference experience. Sure thing. And again, I will be the, despite it, when once we have the site launched, it will be support at presentationmanagement.com, or also there's a support at sessionupload.com. No need to write that down. That is listed all over the site. Um, well, again, while that is a general box, it's very likely going to be me responding. And once a presenter engages with me directly, sometimes I just cut out the system. And I will, I, yes, we could use the emails and online, but it doesn't hurt to do a phone call either. Um, but I'd be, I have no issue having more one-on-one -on -one contact uh, to help people before and during the conference. Thanks so much, Pete. Okay, best wishes with the end of your day, and thank you. You're welcome. And I yeah. saw one last question someone mentioned is there is a filter. When people try to upload, It is there is a set amount of types of files that they could upload. If it's not supported, you will not be able to upload it is the quick way to find out. But best of all is to check the guidelines. Um, if it's not PowerPoint, a PPT or PPTX, please check the guidelines. If your format's not on there, then contact Allison at the events at Caucus, and uh, we'll follow up. Thanks, Pete. All right, Brandon. So th this whole system is going to be new for us, this idea of trying to manage, oh my goodness, hundreds of files that are coming in to Caucus every year. This means we don't have to bring our own laptops, which is kind of exciting, so it will make traveling a little bit easier and lighter. It also means that we have this opportunity to preview things ahead of time, make sure everything's up and running, and everything will be at the podium waiting for us when we arrive in the room. We don't yet know what room we're presenting in. Our schedule of room assignments has not been posted yet, but it will be. Um, but what I'm hearing is that each of the podiums is pretty much the same setup that Pete and his team will have for us. There will be a clicker in each room. There will be a screen. Um, you'll have the option of using a microphone or a podium if you want to. And the room size will be judged by Allison and the on-site team with Carlton. Um, Mitch and his group is totally organized on top of um, the logistics for us, and Allison will do all the on-site organization. So that's fantastic. Now we're also doing this because we want people to really consider our audience. I mean, while we are, as presenters, 
very interested in engaging people and, again, using new technology. We, I learned so much from caucus about what's out there and what students will be using because we tend to be on the cutting edge. I'm very proud of our caucus group. But we also want to be accessible. That that's a, a commitment that we have as an organization and also, I think, in student services generally. So elements of a successful presentation will be uh, partially looking at accessibility. But there's other things we also want to consider. Brandon, when you think about an effective, successful presentation, uh, what are some of the elements you go through? So one important strategy is really to consider everything that you've submitted for your presentation to date. So what has been accepted, it's really important to honor um, what you've detailed in regards to content, your innovative approach, the foundation um, theoretically behind your presentation, the relevancy and significance to the program and how it applies to the work that we do. Um, the organization of your session, so whether that's the breakdown of time or what you'll be covering, um, but also if and how it connects to our caucus core competencies, which is something that has been uh, introduced over the past year. It's really important to look at what you've submitted um, and ensure that you are honoring what you've committed to in your presentation. Um, I encourage everyone to think back to a presentation that they may have experienced. And there are times where what's detailed in the abstract has certainly been met, and there's times where there's new pieces of information that might not be met. Um, so taking the opportunity to review what you've already submitted and thinking about um, what grounds your content and how this connects to the audience regardless of their campus context. So whether it's a university, a college, a small, medium, or large size institution, really framing it with that lens will help you start your presentation strongly, um, but also ensure that it is accessible to all learners in the audience. And that leads to facilitation strategies and resources. So Janet and I cast the net last week over Twitter, and we asked, um, we asked folks who were engaging on Twitter, what are some strategies that they've admired from presentations, and whether that's related to facilitation or the resources that have been provided. And there were two that really stood out for me. And that, um, the first is when the presenters share concepts or ideas, and there's time to synthesize and analyze within that presentation itself. And the second was, leaving the room with tangible ways um, that the audience can act on what they've heard. And I think that that provides everyone in the room the opportunity to think about how this connects to the work that they're doing, but also their institution. In terms of facilitation strategies and resources, there are some external to the work that we do in student services that I'm going to paste in the uh, checkbox, or rather the chat box. Um, that, is, uh, that could be resources that you could review. But another tip could be considering who is a great presenter or facilitator that perhaps you work with or that you've seen before. We encourage you to talk to them, to learn from them, to access the resources on your own campus, whether that is accessibility support in ensuring your slides are meeting standards, and we have tips and tricks to share with you in this session, but also thinking of folks who are working with you um, that you've seen their presentations in the past or you've seen them chair an effective meeting. Learning from them is also an opportunity and something that's really at your fingertips. I love listening to you present, Brandon. I love going to your sessions. You're right, when they're interactive or there's something you can apply back to your own institution, like translate it into your context, it's exciting and it really draws you into a presentation. And that's really what Caucus is all about, right? It's about sharing these resources, being inspired by each other, building community that you can then draw on through the year. Um, and it really does start with these presentations. Definitely. Other places you can also get feedback from. You're going to, in for each of us who presented or uh, submitted a presentation proposal, you would have received some feedback from the reviewers. So we encourage you to read through those. If there were details that needed clarification, or if there was encouragement about something that really stood out as, wow, this is something we want you, like we're excited you're presenting on this piece, make sure that you're highlighting that in your presentation. People will have a chance to read through your longer abstract as well as the short piece um, that will be in the, the conference um, uh, outline. So we want to be clear to what we're, um, our intention was, of course. It makes sense to try and get colleagues or friends or peers to listen to your outline or if you are the kind of person who likes to rehearse ahead of time, then by all means we encourage you to get some feedback from the people around you because that's a, an example of your audience from caucus. And then also you're going to get feedback from our accessibility review team, which Amanda's going to talk about in a moment. And they're going to help you to think about how you're presenting, what the images look like, how you can be uh, respectful of the diversity in your audience. 
But first, let's talk about knowing your room, Allison. If you're going to really give us some logistics about the environment we're in, can you speak a little bit about what our presenters can expect? Absolutely. So this year, all concerned session and big ideas room will have a screen, sound, a microphone, a slide advancer, and Wi-Fi. Please note, you do not need your computer this year. That's one of the major points we want to bring up with the presentation management software. So we're trying to equip you with all the equipment you need. Um, anything additional that you request will be uh, at the presenter expense. Uh, room assignments will be announced at the end of April. Um, when you arrive on site at the conference, I encourage you to locate your room before your session to eliminate a little bit of stress and worry about navigating to your room. And please familiarize yourself with the nearest washroom closest to your breakout session, um, as well as proximity to the registration counters, just if any attendees have any uh, questions. Uh, in terms of room setup, we gave presenters the option of selecting rounds of 10 or rows of chairs in theater style setup. Please note that we've done our very best to accommodate every request, but in some cases it's not possible. Um, I try my best to let all presenters know ahead of time in this case. I'd also like to remind you that setups change from day to day. So if you're presenting on a Tuesday and you enter your breakout room on a Monday, your room might flip overnight. So in order to triple check your room setup, I encourage you to go to the registration counter on the 200 level, and the team there has all the setups listed for the remainder of the conference. That's a great resource for you to use throughout uh, the duration of, uh, of the conference this year. The capacity of each room does vary. So it's important to note some rooms can hold 50 people, some rooms can hold 150 people or more. Uh, this year, we're also featuring one presentation in each concurrent session block as bilingual, meaning the presenter will be introduced and thanked in French and English, and headsets will be made available to attendees. Uh, we're calling these featured sessions, and those are taking place in the main plenary. The capacity of the main plenary is up to 1,000 delegates this year, um, and that will be on the third floor of the Shaw Center. All of those presenters have already been notified separately. So if you haven't been notified, your breakout session is happening in one of the smaller 200-level rooms. And again, I will release the room assignments later this month. Um, I'd like to touch very briefly on our speaker's assistance this year. So uh, each concurrent session has a volunteer assigned to that room in a red t-shirt. Uh, our speaker's assistants are focused on getting you set up for your presentation. They will help greet attendees in your room. They introduce you. They thank you at the conclusion of your session. And they keep track of the clock to make sure that your presentation is staying on time. Many of these volunteers are staff members from host institution Carleton University. They're generously donating many hours of their week to making sure that our conference runs smoothly. So I would ask all presenters to please thank the volunteer in your session as well. Um, we also have Freeman staff on hand as Pete was running through all the uh, technical components this year. Freeman staff are available to help. So there won't be any shortage of hands to support you through the presentation experience. I'd also now like to introduce uh, a member of our host institution planning committee. Her name is Amanda Bettencourt. She's a disabilities coordinator and learning strategist at Carlson. So take it away, Amanda. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Um, I know that Carlson is extremely excited to be hosting caucus this year. and. Um, we're really uh, also excited to have all these accessibility features um, a part of the presentations at caucus as well in order to ensure that everyone has access to the information that you're going to be providing because as Brandon and Janet have said, there is a plethora of knowledge available at caucus and it's really important that everyone have access to what that looks like. So uh, I wanted to start off with introducing an example of what a not great slide would look like. Um, so the contrast of this slide in particular is very difficult to read. Um, 
there is a video embedded in the slide, and if someone were using a reading software to try and uh, to access this slide, uh, it wouldn't necessarily pick up that the video was there, um, as well as the font color, um, the underlining, all of these things I'm pointing out because it can be very difficult for uh, people to read slides that don't have proper formatting there. You might be wondering why do I need to make sure that I embed uh, videos properly, and one of the reasons being is that if a uh, delegate should ask for a copy of the, sl the slides ahead of time, again, if they needed to use reading software, um, that would be something that we'd want to be aware of. One of the important things as well is that if you are showing a video, it's important not to have the video uh, just come up on a slide. Uh, it's important to let people know that you're about to show a video, uh, what's the important information that's going to be shown in the video, so that people who are listening uh, know what to listen for it and know why it's important. So I'm just going to switch to the next slide here, which is on creating accessible presentations. So the general tips that you want to keep in mind are to make sure that your text is large enough. Uh, if your presentation is being viewed on a projector, which all of ours will be, um, the contrast often needs to be more pronounced than on a printed material. So making sure that you have high contrast like this where you have your text is uh, black, for example, and the background is a lighter color. Uh, this one, I believe, is a bit of a light gray. Um, it's easier to be able to see that from a, a far distance. Another tip that's not on here as well that Allison had talked about in terms of uh, what you'll have access to in your rooms, um, I would strongly advise uh, if you can use a microphone to do that. Uh, again, just to ensure that people aren't missing uh, verbally, verbal information that you're saying in your presentations as well. Uh, some of us uh, speak a little bit more softly than others, so you just want to make sure that everyone's having access to that information. Make sure that the content can be interpreted in, in grayscale. So if we need to print it um, for any of our delegates, they will be able to see it as well and they're not missing any information. Use titles on each slide. Again, it helps with reading software to ensure that uh, people can track where they're going. Uh, the slideshow we're showing today, um, all of the slides have titles to them. Um, that we used a format that was already available to us in PowerPoint. So under the Design tab, there are themes you can choose from. If you're creating your own format for PowerPoint, again, just keep in mind every time you add new text to a slide or a video or an image, whatever order you put those that context into the PowerPoint is the order that the reading software is going to read it. So again, bear in mind that that is something um, that you want to be aware of. In this um, good slide that we're looking at, I guess you could say, uh, with the video, um, I added an, an alt tag um, or an alt text hyperlink so that you can click on that and then the video will come up. So again, if someone's using a reading software, they'll be able to know that there is a video there. Uh, and again, we also have uh, in the bottom right-hand corner to check color contrast and font size by visiting Web uh, AIM. And again, that's hyperlinked so you would be able to click on it and go to that website. Now here's a couple accessibility how-tos. So in PowerPoint, um, if you're using a PC, it's in PowerPoint 2010 and higher, and in Mac, uh, it's 2016. So why I'm mentioning PowerPoint is because PowerPoint is the most accessible um, form of presentations that you can offer because you can easily trans, uh, transfer it into an art rich text file or an RTF key. Sorry, <laughs> rich text file, RTF file, so that people um, all the text from your presentations can be read using a reading software. Uh, and again, things like Prezi can often be very confusing for people um, just because of the animations that are included. And for both PowerPoint and Pre Prezi, I would strongly suggest limiting the amount of um, animations you're using, again, just because it can be very confusing to, to viewers sometimes. Um, we have some information there about how to add alt text. Uh, alt text is a descriptive that you use to label any pictures or videos that are included in your PowerPoint. Again, so people will be able to find out where those are located and they can um, follow along with the information that you're saying. 
Uh, checking color contrast and font size, like I said before, is really important. Um, so you want to try and um, err on the side of caution and use a larger uh, text size, font size than you would typically. So somewhere between, um, I would say, 16 point font to 30 point font is going to be where you're going to want to go. Uh, you're also going to want to limit the amount of bullet points uh, that you have on your slides. Again, um, briefly outlining what's important for those who are at your presentation to pay attention to. And again, uh, we have a hyperlink there on how to check the reading order and why that's important. Um, how do you create hyperlinks is really important. So you would just uh, highlight the text that you are using, right click, and then you would uh, insert hyperlink and you would attach the, um, either the website or the file that you got it from. And how to use videos. Uh, so it's really important that any videos that you add to your presentations for caucus are captioned. Uh, if you're getting a video from YouTube, there is a closed captioning button on YouTube that you can uh, click on to have it captioned, it auto captions. I would recommend watching it with the auto captions to make sure that uh, all the spelling is there and all the words are there correctly. If you need to make edits, we did create uh, a handy tool for you. So, uh, on the caucus website, there is an access document. Um, I believe it's underneath the presenter's information. And in the access doc, there is a hyperlink to a document that says minimum presenter expectations. And in that document, it outlines in detail how to incorporate all of these points into your PowerPoint because Creating an accessible PowerPoint could be a webinar on its own. Um, and uh, I only had a few minutes to talk about it today, so um, if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to help. Or as has already been said, you can talk with your accessibility teams at your own institutions to see how you can implement uh, accessibility features into your presentations. One thing I wanted to touch on um, that Kathleen was going to talk about as well is um, to recognize that um, we are trying to include um, inclusive spaces. So again, uh, just being aware of the audience that you have, uh, who those people could be made up of. Um, it is Ramadan during that time as well, so we are cognizant of that. And um, I think that's pretty much it on my part. Um, I wasn't paying attention to any of the questions, so uh, Janet, did you have any questions that you needed me to answer at all? I think no for right now, Amanda, but the overview is really clear. Okay. Uh, we've got Allison answering some questions in the chat box, and I'm going to turn it over to Brandon, just cognizant of the time, but don't leave us yet in case we do have more questions. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Amanda, to your team for ensuring we can meet the needs of all of our delegates. Um, so the next part of our presentation focuses on what makes a presentation great. Um, so we're going to share some engagement tips um, after we share some of the tangibles with you. So it's important to ensure that your contact information is available if you're comfortable with that, whether that's a business card, whether that's on a slide. Um, if people want to continue the conversation with you after your presentation, that could provide a lot of great opportunities for you as a presenter, um, but also for um, future collaborations if that's something you're interested in as well. Um, from casting the net, um, we were asking folks to share their suggestions using using hashtag caucus17. If you have suggestions, feel free to share those now or later if a new idea comes to mind. But some that were uh, that came up during this presentation, but also before, were the fact that uh, presentation has takeaway messages, whether that's information or resources, something that folks could use back at their institution. Another. Uh, Another aspect of making a great presentation is addressing what the presenter has committed to and ensuring there's no surprises. So if there's an opportunity to engage or perhaps think, pair, share, or other strategies for facilitation and engagement, making sure that our delegates are knowing that that could happen and that's in your abstract is really important. Opportunities to interact with the content for them to perhaps wonder how the information you're sharing can connect at their home institution, but also a chance to connect with others who are doing something similar at the end. There could be an opportunity for opportunities, again, for collaboration or piggybacking. Um, but also up-to-date information that keeps us current to the good work that we're doing is also really important. And I'll pass it over to Janet. 
Well, I think you've said all the highlights really around engagement, Brandon. I mean, we talked a little bit about visuals and ways to make them engaging. Uh, verbals, oh my goodness, that pacing your talk. I, I get excited and I talk quickly. So when I am presenting in front of an audience, I have to remember to slow myself down, uh, to really try to focus on my main point, to repeat myself for the really key pieces that you want people to take away. Um, someone once told me, smile when you talk, which I think is in my school anyway, but they can hear it in your voice when you're smiling, even online like this, when people enjoy what they're talking about, and when we're smiling and talking, you, it engages people, you can just feel it. We know that caucus is interactive, so we encourage you to make it dynamic, to create dialogue, regardless of the kind of presentation you're doing, with the exception, of course, of the, um, the big ideas, the pika chuka, um, we know that making an activity as part of your, your presentation will help to engage people. Allison talked about knowing your audience, um, or knowing your room, but we would also say know your audience, do a poll, find out who's there, and be aware of how you can apply what you're teaching in various contexts. We have a ton of resources, don't we, Allison? And I think you've mentioned a bunch of them already. Um, this ask part, events at caucus.ca, that's your, your lifeline to Allison and to the team of caucus. Uh, please draw on your colleagues and your peers. We would encourage you to practice, but don't rehearse. You don't want it to be canned. Um, look at the feedback. And then there's, you can also look online at other kinds of presentations to get ideas. Allison, next steps for people. Do you want to briefly mention what they can expect? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so at the end of the month, uh, you will receive a revised program, program capturing the communities of practice and the student affairs and services competencies that all presenters identified in your program submission. We will be releasing that uh, as part of a longer, more detailed program for all attendees along with your room assignments. Um, and a reminder to register for the conference. So registration is now open. You can go to caucus.ca slash conference to get yourself signed up. Um, in early May, you will receive uh, a link from uh, caucus to upload your uh, session to the presentation management system. You will receive a number of documents uh, to help support you. And Pete and I will be doing another little demo to share with all presenters in terms of uploading your, uh, your presentation. It's very important that everyone submits by Friday, May 26th, so we can audit all the presentations uh, for accessibility standards and make any necessary changes uh, and allow us enough time to do so. Also, in early May, you're going to be, receive an invitation to upload your headshot, your bio, and your institution in our digital app. At that time, we'll ask you to click through the app, and we're going to ask our presenters to uh, test out the app so far, give us your feedback, and then we'll launch it to the rest of the attendees at the beginning of June. So that's it for me. Awesome. All right, well, our hope was to be within 60 minutes, Brandon. We, we did pretty good. We've got two minutes left. We've answered a lot of questions along the way. Uh, one piece was about Road to Caucus. I just saw um, Bailey giving me a nudge. Road to Caucus is happening again. Do you want to say anything about that, Brandon, briefly? That's right. There's a group of student affairs professionals um, from currently Ryerson University, Queen's University, and Western University that will be cycling from Toronto to Ottawa. Um, so from the Road to Caucus experience from two years ago in Vancouver, um, we're encouraging folks to engage also using the hashtag Road to Caucus um, social media engagement to tell us how you're getting to caucus, um, but as we also know, the official hashtag um, for caucus this year is hashtag caucus17. Love it. And you can check out more about the. Sorry. No, and so you could also check out more about the bike ride itself at ryersonstudentaffairs.com. Oh my gosh, so good. Okay, we had a couple of other questions about registering. So, Allison, all presenters need to register for the conference. Yes. And that information is available online. Mm -hmm. You've got resources available to you through us. Um, we have events at caucus.ca for answering all of our questions about this new management system. And we have each other. We're part of a fantastic community. Please draw on us. Brandon, final words, reflections, next steps? 
Um, I'd like to say thank you to all of our presenters uh, today, Jessica, Amanda, Pete, Allison, um, as well as everyone for listening today. We really want this to be the beginning of a conversation leading into caucus, um, so whether that's things, something you're excited about, something you're looking to get feedback on, or perhaps a suggestion, um, please feel free to share that if you do use Twitter using hashtag um, caucus17. Um, and as um, Allison said, if there are any outstanding questions or, or needs, you can also contact events at caucus.ca. Lovely. Thanks so much for being with us. Brandon, I adore working with you in all venues, and I love the way caucus keeps bringing us together and together across this country. And same to you. It's great to keep this engagement going. And, and um, our relationship really did get started with a presentation at Caucus back in 2009, I guess. And it, it shows the different opportunities that could come from that. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, everyone. If you have any more questions, please post them. And we'll get them as best we can. And take care of each other. Thanks so much for presenting at Caucus. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Janet and Brandon. <laughs> Thanks, Allison, and Amanda, and Pete, wherever you are, and Jessica. <laughs> we'll see you in June. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>